All right, hi team. So we are now going into the seven elements of design. So this is the lecture. Moving on into the our first element, we have space. Space is defined as an interior space by structural elements such as walls, ceilings, floor, and columns. So space is is the first element of design. So space refers to an area provided for a particular purpose, uh, two or three dimensional. Uh, space can be divided into distinct parts through uh, by doors, walls, space dividers, screens. It just provides a sense of security, dividing up places. So too little space can create a feeling of loss of privacy. So think of streets of maybe New York City, downtown Seattle, they're very narrow. Uh, then we have too much space can make it make you feel lonely. Um, so think of like the deserts of Nevada. Then we have space uh, should change gradually instead of abruptly. So kitchen flows into dining rooms, which flow into dens, which flow into back porches. There's a natural progression. So for this next slide, we have a very, very small space. That is, there's not enough space for, look at this office, it's cluttered. Uh, there's so much stuff, it's so, it, how can somebody work and be productive? Then on the right, we have a bathroom that is almost non-functional because it's also a crowded space. The above space is too small to use as a sitting area and or dining room. So you have to really think about uh, space functions. Now, how about spaced out? So notice the division of space using a street of uh, a screen, which is on the right and columns below. The space to the right is used as a den. The designer made certain to incorporate the use of window space on the wall. Then we have shape. Shape is defined as self-contained area with geometric or organic form. So a positive shape in a painting automatically creates a negative shape. So shape is a flat sil silhouette or image. Shape has two dimensions, both length and width. Shape is created by intersecting lines that form geometric shape. Third, we have form. So form is the outline edges of a 3D object. So it has length, width, depth, as well as volume and mass. A square is a shape, but when six are joined together, it creates a cube, which is a form. So dressers, chest of drawers, those are all forms. Forms can be sturdy or fragile. Heavy wood, versus a glass vase. Related forms look better together than unrelated forms. So a collection of circular objects in various sizes of vase uh, versus square, rectangular, and circular objects. So forms aren't just 2D, they're mostly 3D. So your bedroom is an open form which one can walk into, like your shower or your bathtub. Furniture, plants, and decor elements such as mirrors, lamps, are closed forms. The understanding of forms used in space is vital to achieving the desired feel of a space. Too much use of irrectangular forms in a room can give the effect of stiffness and seriousness, whereas the use of circular forms soften up a space and make it feel more bubbly and light. Our fourth element is texture. Texture is the surface quality of a shape. So rough, smooth, soft, hard, glossy. Texture can be physical, meaning tactile, something that you could touch, or visual that you can see. So texture is the surface, tactile quality. Tactile refers to perception of touch. And it's crinkled, rough, smooth, wrinkled. So patterns of colors often form illusions of texture. Now we have smooth and formal. So we have two images here in the kitchen uh, and dining room. So a smooth formal look where 
a lot of rectangular and circular uh, geometric shapes and sizes, but also a little bit of roughness just because of the different textures that are used here. Now we have rough and informal spaces that we are looking at. Our fifth element is light, natural light versus which is sunlight, man-made might, man-made is a light bulb. So you could set the mood in a room and it plays a functional role to light for a reading area. Our sixth area of, uh, our sixth element of design is color. So color is the most important, important element of design and the most exciting tool for all designers. Colors are also called hues. We learn this during our color theory unit. So color has patterns of colors often form illusions of texture. Floral patterns give off texture even when printed on a silk, a smooth surface. Striped fabrics gives a sense of rigid textures. Furniture can have texture. Carvings made into wood or wood grains showing through a stain can affect color by subduing or intensifying it. Rough surfaces absorb more light and smooth surfaces reflect the light. Finally, our seventh element of design is line, which is the path traced by the movement of a single point. Line can be considered in two ways, the linear marks made with a pen or brush or the edge created when two shapes meet. So there is a visual direction of design. It moves your eye and used to emphasize an element or to hide one. Lines are the visual direction of any design. They are used to emphasize an element or to hide one. For an example, they can help make a short room appear taller. Lines can be used in patterns of wallpaper or fabric or in shapes of furniture and windows. Types of lines, vertical adds height and can represent strength. Tall furniture, bookshelves and doors. Horizontal leads eyes left or right and create width. Long couches, long tables. Diagonal such, suggests action or movement, creates an excitement in design. Staircases, checkerboard floors, curved adds a softening or graceful effect arched doorways and windows, rounded furniture. So here we have different uh, types of lines. So all lines have a direction, horizontal, vertical, or oblique. Horizontal suggests calmness, stability, and tranquility. Vertical gives a feeling of balance, formality, alertness, and oblique suggests a movement and action. So we have our horizontal lines, which is a very, it gives off smoothness and tranquility. And our vertical lines give that feeling of balance, formality, and alertness. It also makes a room appear bigger than it is. So these two pictures, we have vertical lines. We have vertical wallpaper, but also we have vertical lines going all the way down this hallway being the doors. It appears, it makes the hallway appear longer than what it is. Now we have horizontal in these images and it just makes the rooms, all of these rooms, a lot more comfortable, relaxed, tranquil. And then we have diagonal which causes interest. So look at the patterns in the balcony of the of this hotel or possibly apartment complex. So it gives off this pattern which gives it just interesting looks and it causes a, it just makes, it, it brings interest to your eye which makes you more interested to look at something. Then finally we have curved. So we have a curved window, we have a very modern looking room and then we have more curved balconies and looks like on the walls are curved, the ceiling is curved, everything about this is all a curved lines in this space. So these are the seven elements of design.
and we will be going through this lecture together in class, but you will also have this in video. I hope you're having a good day. See you soon. Bye.